On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, 10 charts on global shipping in 10 minutes. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglano, and welcome to today's episode. So we're going to look at 10 charts from the review of Maritime Transport just released in November of this year on the past year in global shipping. So went through the report, found what I thought was the 10 most significant, important charts. There are a few other ones I tossed in there to supplement the main charts. But what we're going to do is go through each chart in a minute, bang right through them so that you'll be up to date on what's going on with global shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a second and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the review of maritime transport and navigating stormy waters. Slide number one deals with international maritime trade by cargo type. This chart goes back to 1980 and up to 2021. And one of the things that stands out in this chart is number one, the growth in international maritime trade. In 1980, it's less than 4 billion tons. By 2000, it's 6 billion tons. By 2010, it's over 8 billion tons. 2015, just around 10 billion tons. And we're sitting at just over 11 billion tons right now. The chart on the right shows you the impact of the financial crisis of 2008 and COVID. And what we saw in there is the annual percentage change. And you see those dips in 2008. And again, in 2020, you see the whiplash effect there where right afterwards it booms back up and then drops down and forms the plateau. So all that is extremely telling of what will happen in the future with global shipping. Slide number two takes that global tonnage and divides it up among goods loaded and goods discharged around the planet. And one of the things that stands out quite pronouncedly is the impact Asia has on global shipping with the amount of goods discharged and the amount of goods loaded, followed up there by Europe, North America, Latin America and Caribbean, Oceania, and then finally Africa. Some of the supplemental charts there are really interesting to look at too. So the roller coaster of global port traffic. One of the things we see here are those port calls per half year and we see that dip caused by COVID and then all of a sudden that huge spike that takes place immediately afterwards. The other is the difference in times in port for container ships showing medium hours for vessels in port. Canada has the longest with Norway at the shortest with the global span, basically the global average being about 20 hours for a container ship in port. The U.S. sits there in fourth place. Slide three looks at liner shipping connectivity. This talks about how connected the world is, particularly through containerized shipping. And what we see here are the 20 top nations on the planet or ports really that are all connected together. From the US over to a cluster of ports you see over there in Europe, England, and then Northern Europe, Italy, Spain, Morocco, which has a huge hub for it, Saudi Arabia, uh, Oman, and then down to Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, China, Taiwan, South Korea, all of them having major impacts in their connectivity. That little subchart we have in here talks about that dramatic rise and fall of shipping costs, where we see that Mount Everest of shipping costs that spiked had a huge impact that we saw in connectivity. Notice the nations which are having major changes in connectivity, South America and India. Chart four deals with the bulk trade. This chart also from the Review of Maritime Transport looks at the percentage of bulk goods exported and imported. So when you look at iron ore, the biggest exporter by percentage is gonna be Australia and Brazil. We're the largest importer of iron ore overwhelmingly is China, followed by Japan, Europe, and Republic of Korea. Coal exporters, Indonesia, Australia, Russia, and the United States top that chart with China, India, Japan, and Korea on the receiving end. You can see really where manufacturing and developing is being done around the world. Go over to grain, you see the US leading grain exports followed closely by Brazil, Argentina, Ukraine, EU and United Kingdom and Australia followed by Canada. And then who's importing it? It's East and South Asia, Africa and West Asia. Finally, the tanker trade, one of the things to note is the decrease in the amount of crude oil being shipped around the world, and the same thing with clean product. Slide five packs a lot of data in here, and we're gonna break down some of these in separate slides in a minute, but just to give you an idea 
on the scope of global shipping. We look at four categories here. In terms of shipbuilding, it is clustered within about a thousand miles of East Asia, China, Korea, and Japan. When it comes to ownership, kind of spread across the world there with Greece, China, and Japan being the largest owners of ships. Registration, these are those big, huge open registries, and we see Panama, Liberia, and the Marshall Islands absolutely dominating them. And then in the area of recycling, of the scrapping and taking old ships and getting rid of them, that's Pakistan, India, with the largest being in Bangladesh. Breaking down that issue of registrations just a little bit more, we look at the top five registries in terms of millions of deadweight tons. These vessels represent over 50% of the world's ships, and you see Panama there in the lead with Liberia eclipsing the Marshall Islands. That's a big change that we've seen developing over the 2010s, and now Liberia being on the top category. Marshall Islands close behind China, Hong, uh, Hong Kong specifically in fourth, and Singapore in number five. If you actually add China and Hong Kong together, they will surpass Marshall Islands and actually be third on the list. Of significant note, half of the world fleet is owned by Asian companies. And of the world's 2.2 billion deadweight tons of carrying capacity, one billion of that is flagged in Panama, Liberia, and the Marshall Islands. When we look at shipbuilding, 95% of all world shipbuilding is focused and concentrated off of East Asia. And you see four countries that dominate that trade. China has 44%, Korea with 32%, Japan with 18%, the Philippines with one, and the other 190 something countries on the planet split up the remaining 5%. Uh, China is on the growth. We've seen China increase in this level. And you look at what China is building, they are dominating the bulk carrier trade. They have significant play in both the oil tankers and container ship trade. And whereas in Korea, you see much more specialization in their carriers. They are focused largely on oil tankers, about the same level of container ships as China, but where they really dominate is in gas carriers. These are LNG carriers, although China is growing on that. And Japan tends to focus on the bulk and oil carriers. Slide number eight, a series of slides right here, give a good indication of what's going on with the ocean fleet today. In the upper left, figure 2.2, you show the average age of the merchant fleet. The trend is toward an older fleet. Since 2010, uh, we've seen the average age of the merchant fleet increase. Goes from about 20 years of age, it dips just a little bit and then jumps back up about 22 years of age. And nearly all categories of ships are increasing in age, because if you look in the lower left, you can see the amount of vessels being built is substantially down. Massive decrease in the amount of vessels being built now. A lot of that has to do with engine technology. The one exception you see, kind of the huge uptick there from 2021 to 2022 is container ships. But the big issue here is fuel and technology and propulsion. And that is because we're seeing the amount of CO2 coming out of the world fleet increasing, even though IMO is pushing for this CO2 reduction across. This is slowing down ship production. Talked about emissions from vessels, slide number nine talks about the issue of bunker fuel, heavy fuel oil and low sulfur fuel oil, and the monthly averages from June of 2020 to June 2022. On January 1st of 2020, the mandate went in for very low sulfur fuel oil, or your ships could still be burning the high sulfur fuel oil, but you had to have an engine scrubber installed. However, one of the things we're seeing is ports are starting to forbid and outlaw the use of scrubbers. You see right here, really the peak of the difference between those costs, whereas the fuel cost was kicking right around $300 per ton back in mid-2020. The spike here is in mid-2022 with very low sulfur oil costing over $1,000 and high sulfur fuel oil costing over 700. The most recent prices, I pulled them up here, are 631 for very low sulfur, 434 for high sulfur. That's still a $200 per ton spread. That is significant when you consider that the average price was under $300 just two years ago. That's impacting the ability for vessels to move goods. The last side deals with the war in Ukraine. So obviously we could not 
have a report on ocean shipping without talking about that. Figure 423 there looks at the number of weekly departures of cargo ships in the Black Sea from the beginning of the year through the 38th week, comparing 2021-2022. Fairly obvious where the, the, the Russia invades Ukraine in that Ukraine chart. You can see that massive dip right there. You even see a slowdown in terms of the Russian Federation. What's interesting to note is the increase in vessel calls at ports in Romania and Bulgaria, picking up the slack from the ability of Ukraine to get out. You see Ukraine start kicking back up there. That's the shifting to those ports along the southern part of Ukraine, along the Danube, and then the opening of the Ukrainian ports under the Black Sea Grain Initiative. And that's even more pronounced when you look at the monthly calls there on the figure of 425. So that's it, 10 slides in 10 minutes, pretty close. Uh, I, I try to do the best I could, but that gives you a quick little synopsis of what's going on with ocean shipping. I strongly rec recommend, if you can, be in the show notes, head on over to UNCTAD and look at their review of maritime transport. They have great resources and information out there. They've got uh, fact sheets and infographs and, and just a, a slew of material out there about ocean shipping where you can get smarter about the ins and outs of this very complex industry and where everything stands, all the different sectors, all that information is available for you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, donate to the page and support it by hitting that super thanks button below or head on over to Patreon, become a patron of the page. You can become a monthly or yearly subscriber to the page. Till our next video, this is Sal signing off.